back in the uh, Great Depression, you know, we had the Dust Bowl and that whole thing happened. And soil became a very important thing to the whole nation. You know, before it was all about how big we can get tractors and how much soil we can move. And, you know, once we started having those big dust storms and we started losing all of our topsoil, there, was, there started to be a conversation as to whether or not we can do something about that. And so out of the you know, Great Depression Dust Bowl era, the Soil Erosion Service was formed. Um, and the primary goal was to prevent soil erosion because that was such a devastating impact to Southeast Colorado, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Um, a few years later, they changed the name to Soil Conservation Service. And from the 1940s all up to the early 90s, it was the Soil Conservation Service and the mission was really soil mapping and conservation with technical assistance. Okay, now Sam, we're going to talk about some of the tools and books that you use when you're um, doing a soils map. So this is kind of our field bible. This is the field book for describing and sampling soils. This is version 3.0. This came about it came out about a year or two ago. And this this has everything. So this has um, you can see all these different little we have geomorphology, we have water, vegetation, geology. This has everything you really ever need to know about soils in the field. So if you need it, this is your go-to guide, and this is really helpful. Um, when you're working in an area, you get you begin to get familiar with the plants. Um, for instance, I mean, you can look out this way, and you can see the dominant plant species is black greasewood. You have some alkali sacatone or salt grass in there as well. Um, so... Depending on your area, you can get familiar with the veg very fast, but if you're working in a new area, it's really nice to have a plant book handy. All right, so I showed you guys the thymol blue indicator earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the thymol blue pH indicator on a couple of different um, surface crusts that we just pulled. So this was the, uh, the white crust that we found over in the area where um, we saw some of that frost eating. And this is more miscellaneous salts. So you got your uh, magnesium, your potassium, your calcium. Um, and then we also pulled a crust that's more sodic. So this is more just sodium. There are the other salts, but this is more influenced by sodium and it had that columnar structure too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run um, the thymol blue on each of these. And then I'm also going to do a, a fizz test with the calcium carbonate. And um, we're going to see if these guys fizz. So here is the thymol blue. So I'm going to give a couple of drops to this. And do for good measure. It's always important to store this stuff in the shade out of the sunlight. And we're going to just give it a little bit of the shade just to make sure everything's mixed. And let it react. Um, so... So this indicator, it's more of a yellow if it's a, a pH around 8, and it's more of a blue-purple if it's around 9.6. And you can see that this blew this indicator out of the water, that this the pH of this stuff is above 9.6. So that explains why no plants are growing near it. Um, that is really, really basic for soil. Well, uh, little, one of the columns, just so we can kind of see what the structure's like. And keep in mind the ground's frozen now, so we're not going to get too great of a sample. Just... Alright, so what we're doing is we're digging up some of these columns to see if we can get a better look at the structure. The soil is frozen right now, this time of year, so it's good to keep in mind that we can't get very deep without hitting the frost line. Awesome. Well, thanks, Sam. Yeah.